All right, time for Upfront Thursdays. On the heels of that, a look at the week in Wisconsin politics. The same week that, as we know, early in-person voting began here in the state with big interest and long lines. The final tallies will tell us if that is because of the top of the ticket or maybe down ticket races. And that's where we begin today, one step down. And of course, we welcome in Matt Smith, who is the executive producer and co-host of Upfront, also the political director at WISN TV in Milwaukee. And Matt, you're talking to both of those Senate candidates this week in the show. You get to their thoughts in just a minute, but I'm curious if you've seen any signs of movement in, in this race, right? We'd seen it tightening up. The internal polls said it was tightening up. The Cook Political Report calls it a toss-up. Any movement since then? Yeah, I mean, I think it's essentially tied at this point, and both campaigns are going into this final stretch believing that it's tied, having their internal polls showing that it's tied. A new poll just coming out today, literally 48-48 uh, for both candidates. And you think back six years ago, Tammy Baldwin won this race by 11 points. We saw her advantage over the last couple months slip from what it was, you know, an 11 point way early on down to about seven points. And here we are a week and a half out from election day. People are going to the polls as we speak. And this is a dead heat tide race, 48-48. The internals from both campaigns, as they're telling me, is reflecting this as well. Matt, you talked to both of them, as we mentioned. Curious what, what their takeaways are. Can you sense momentum from one candidate versus the other at, based on what you just told me? So listen, there's a different approach in these final days, right? I think the the Hovde campaign is of the, uh, of the impression, and there's conventional wisdom out there, that Trump has to win Wisconsin, and, and he probably has to win it by, you know, 20, 30, at least 40,000 votes for Hovde to have a good chance of winning. The campaign will acknowledge that. Uh, Hovde told us, yeah, listen, it would be a really good and a really big help if Trump wins this state for him. Baldwin's approach, as she saw six years ago, is still trying to go for some of these crossover voters. So she, she, not only is she mobilizing the base in these final days, she's looking for independence, and she's also going to be out in the western and northwestern part of the state, potentially looking to seal the deal on people who might vote for Trump and vote for her. There likely will be a sliver of Trump Baldwin voters. The question is, can she expand that margin large enough, especially in the western part of the state, the northwestern part of the state, even the Fox Valley and the Green Bay area, to solidify a win? And that's really going to be one of her main targets over these final days. Interesting tactics there. Matt, I'm curious about this because the last time we had a Senate race and a presidential race here in the state in the same year was 2016. 70,000 more combined ballots for Ron, or votes, excuse me, for Ron Johnson and Russ Feingold than there were for Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. We knew there were a lot of double haters back in 2016, right? But are there any indications that we might see better success down the ticket than at the top of ticket? Yeah, I think that's still an open question, and it's a possibility in, in the scenarios the campaigns are preparing and, and looking for. Listen, it, 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 and this was true when Biden was still at the top of the ticket, Tammy Baldwin completely distancing herself from the top of the administration, mm -hmm. saying, listen, I'm running for Senate here in Wisconsin. I'm not running uh, for the White House. She's done that in, in and of a sense still with Vice President Kamala Harris and, and somewhat distancing herself from the Biden administration. You, you have Hovde taking the Trump endorsement at, at the top of the ticket, but you've also seen him not necessarily go against, but push back to, on Trump on certain policy issues, especially related to the economy. So at the same time, yes, they're trying to embrace the top of the ticket, <laughs> knowing they can help them. Uh, but in moments that maybe they think it won't help them, they're, they're, you know, they're trying to impose this. I'm an independent candidate running for the Senate. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a running mate of Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. Very well put there. All right. I know you guys saw this down in Milwaukee. Lines on the first day of early voting. We certainly saw them up here. We know there were some problems with the database system that uh, municipalities were using to print labels and things like that. But what kind of indication do you get from this early turnout that we've seen for in-person voting and what that may say for overall turnout? Well, listen, I mean, so you're seeing it in, in typical Democratic strongholds, Milwaukee and Madison, but you're also seeing this early voting turnout in counties that voted for Donald Trump. So the question is, and we don't know the data behind this mm -hmm. because there's, there's no identifying on if you're a Democrat or Republican voting early. There are indications that the Republican push, at least by party leaders here in the state, to 
to vote early is having some impact and working a bit. As for those delays, uh, I know they subsided a little bit where, where you guys are up in the northeastern part of the state. Down here in the Milwaukee region, uh, there, there are still some issues and still some clerks, especially in Milwaukee and some of the suburbs surrounding Milwaukee that are still seeing these delays and experiencing this and now, you know, handwriting uh, as opposed to having the, the labels printed instantly. The state still says they're working on this. Uh, I mean, this is something that needs to get fixed quickly. There's so much attention on the confidence in our state's elections, and, and th this is one of those efforts that, that they're working to resolve as we sit here and, and talk this afternoon, Chris. All right, and as we talk this afternoon, Matt, Marquette University Law School finishing up in the field. We'll get the results of their final poll of state voters mm -hmm. coming up on Wednesday. I'm curious about two things. One, what are you going to be looking closely at when those results come out? And two, how much do you think voters are paying attention to polls at this juncture? It's a good question. I think we're going to really need to closely look at the independent voters, where they have swung, if they've swung from one side to another, especially when you look at top of the ticket. How many say they are still undecided? And yes, the campaigns believe, the pollsters believe that there are still some undecided voters out there who are still making up their minds. So where is that major swing for the independent voters? Because that's really going to decide this at, at this point, 10, 20, 30,000 voters. We know the enthusiasm, enthusiasm is out there. Are those still maintained where they are? Um, and, and what these head-to-head -head matchups look like and, and, and the underlying uh, of who the voters are, men, women, where they're going in these final few days. All right, Matt, thanks so much for the insight. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Sounds good. See ya.